Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Prophetic Insight. It's actually the third day of Prophetic Insight. So welcome to everyone, those who've been, you know, with us since Tuesday and even to the first timers. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those who um, haven't been with us for Tuesday and Wednesday, my name is Ubi Tepotladi and I am your host for today and, you know, tomorrow as well. So yesterday, um, for those who were here, um, we experienced such a powerful teaching by Umulemo. She mentioned how prophecy is not only a matter of the heart, but also a matter of reverence and obedience, right? Um, Renika, do you mind switching off your mic, please? Thank you so much. So we had such an amazing, amazing um, teaching by Umulemo yesterday. She told us that prophecy is not only a matter of the heart, but it is also a matter of reverence and obedience, right? Um, but she also went on to say that if we are striving to operate in this gift, then we should we should ask ourselves, right? Who do we belong to? That's what she asked us. Who do we belong to? She said something so profound yesterday. She said that you are the prophet of whose ever word you speak. And that is why she was asking us, who do we belong to? Whose prophets are we, right? She went on to ask us, are we the prophets of the economy or prophets of the climate, right? Are we prophets of our own desires, what we feel, what we see? Because if that is the case, then we are not actually prophets of the Lord because prophets of God speak the word of God. They do not only speak the word of God over other people's lives, but even their own lives. So what I left with yesterday was um, Omolemo encouraging us to intentionally be prophets of God, right? Because once again, you are the prophet of whosoever word you speak. Amen. Amen. So today um, we are preparing to receive another insightful, another packed teaching. So once again, take out your notebooks, you know, take out your phones, take out anything that you can use to write down any of the information, right, that resonates with you. But before we get into anything, I just want to pray over us and um, begin the session. The scripture that I have for us today is 1 Samuel 10, verse 5 to 6. And this is in the Amplified Version, and it reads, After that, so this is what Samuel says to Saul, right? After anointing Saul. He says to Saul, After that, you will come to the hill of God where the garrison of the Philistines is. And when you come there to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place of worship with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them. And they will be prophesying. And now listen to what verse 6 says. It says, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into another man. Let me read that again for us. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into another man. There's just something about this verse, guys, that, that tells me that there's something about the spirit of prophecy, or there's something about this gift of prophecy that actually has the ability to change you completely. Um, this afternoon, after this scripture was shared to me by a friend of mine i actually started reflecting on how the minute i realized right that the lord is actually speaking to me he's actually clear when it comes to communicating with me that's the moment everything changed in my life so what i want us to believe for today is just that prophetic encounter or that prophetic moment in our own lives that changes absolutely everything, right? And that is why um, events like this are so important because when we are striving for the prophetic, just like Paul says, where we are learning how to be accurate in hearing the voice of God for ourselves, we are in fact saying to the Lord, God, 
change everything about me, change me, change everything around me, change my dream language, change everything about me. So in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so, so much that you have given us an opportunity to come together and learn from you, Lord, so that you can change absolutely everything about our lives. What I'm praying over my sisters and my brothers today, Lord, is that prophetic moment, that prophetic encounter in their lives that changes absolutely everything about them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we're asking that you also prepare our hearts today open our ears even open our eyes to whatever we have whatever you have in store for us today make our heart father god fertile soil in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen okay so today we are joined by maxine jafta um it is such an honor to have maxine on this platform she has not only been a blessing to me in, in her ministry, but she's been a blessing to so many people. Um, she is the founder of Powerhouse. Um, and this woman is extremely accurate, guys. This is an accurate prophetic voice. And I believe you guys will be incredibly blessed by Maxine. So, OC, you have the floor. <laughs> thank you so much to be simple i really appreciate that introduction um very uh intimidating introduction <laughs> i'm like oh man i have to say things that are accurate today but um i've got something very i think probably um ex yeah it is exciting let's let's have fun chatting about prophecy i hope um I guess my hope and my dream always when teaching with, about prophecy is really just letting people know that God is not as complicated as we think he is, you know, um, and that he's so interested in speaking to us, speaking to us on a daily basis, speaking to us about, um, about his business, you know, about what's on his heart. You know, we are, we are as prophets, vessels, but really carriers with the heart of God and transfers of the love of God. So I'm grateful for the space. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share. Um, yeah, so we said, well, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I hope I um, will at the very least meet the expectation of allowing God to move, you know, in this space. I believe he's already here. So let us pray some more because we love to speak to the Lord. So Lord, we just, oh man, thank you for this great honor and privilege, Lord God, again, of um, being here tonight, Lord God. Um, thank you for making us carriers of your word. Thank you for every person who is here, Lord God. I ask, Father God, especially that, um, yeah, you speak through me, Lord God, but most importantly, Father God, you create that hunger for you, Father God, um, in this meeting, Father God, and for the lives, Father God, from here on out, Lord God, thank you for the work that's been done um, last night, Lord God, um, the night before, Lord God, you've begun a good thing, Lord God, use us, Father God, on this journey, in Jesus' mighty and holy name, amen, amen, okay, cool, so I'm going to speak about my favorite topic in the world, which is prophecy, it is my favorite topic because um, I, I, I love the Lord. He's my favorite person. He is my best friend. He is my leader. He is my co-creator. You know, everything that I, that I do, I try to do with him because I think he is that great genius. I hope that you will, um, at the very least catch that fire, you know, the heart of relationship. So my, I would say my teaching, my talk, my testimony, all of this um, today is titled Spirit and Friendship. So let's title it Spirit and Friendship. Um, so um, I'll start with the scripture. Um, and the scripture that I'll start with um, is, uh, we'll start with John 15, verse 15, right? And um, it says, I no longer call you servants because I, a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from the Father, I have made known to you. Um, at the heart of, of, of prophecy is 
is this great relationship that we have with God, this great friendship. God shares with you because first and foremost, you are his friend. Okay, so, so just hold on to that, that he shares with you because he is your friend. He's sharing with you not to intimidate you. He's sharing with you not to freak you out. <laughs> you know, um, he's sharing with you because you are his friend. That is first and foremost. Okay, and it is out of this great relationship and this great friendship that you develop trust you learn how to hear his voice. So let's, let's, let me give you an example. So for instance, if you spend a lot of time with someone, you get to know a lot about how they, they interact, how they, they, they work things out. You develop trust, you build relationship with them. You know their voice so much so that even in a crowd, you can hear them from a mile away. So if Munora and I are friends, and we're, you know, at a at a party, and maybe somebody, you know, I can hear her screaming, go, yeah, you know, far away. I haven't seen her, but because I know her voice, I'll be able to tell, you know, that that's her, you know. And I want you to know that the more time you spend with God, is the more you'll be able to hear Him clearly. Okay, so this question of am I caring from God that is constantly, you know, at our at our, at our at our, uh, you know, at the edge of our lips constantly, you know, is really not a question when you're spending more and more time with God. And as a, as a prophet, as somebody who hears from the Lord, that is your landing place, this place of great relationship, this place of, of, of spending time with him. You know, there is no relationship if you're not spending time with someone. It just is what it is, you know. So spend time with him and spend time with him with the intention of being able to to know him better and to hear his voice better. So let's start, let's let's just start from there. Okay. So what is prophecy? Prophecy is is is, is two parts. One, it is hearing from God and it is transferring the word of God to somebody else. The aim and the heart of it is threefold. It is for encouragement, for exhortation, and for comfort. So that's all in in, in um, 1 Corinthians 14. Now, the interesting thing about this chapter of, of about prophecy is that it comes after the chapter of love, which is 1 Corinthians 13. It comes straight after that, which means that before we can even prophesy, we must catch the heart of prophecy that, you know what, we, we can prophesy all we want, all we want. And the, and the Bible says we'll be like that resounding God. But if we do not have love, if we do not have love for people, it will be impossible for us to represent God, right? Which is, which is what it is. It is representing God and transferring his word. And, and the heart of prophecy is that love, transferring the love of God to people. So I'll get into the technicalities of, of, of what your life will look like as a prophet. Um, how do you accurately hear from him? But I want you to catch the heart of it, and that is to love. Now, if you haven't caught the heart of, of it, it will, when they speak about that resounding gong, I want to give you an example of what that sounds like. That sounds like giving prophetic words, you know, that are just about you and you, you know, sharing, you know, accurately or speaking accurately over people's lives. It means, it means, you know, being cold. It sometimes can mean shaming people. It can mean, you know, um, condemning people, you know, and that is not the heart of God. You know, um, when we share prophecy, the heart of God is that we share his love. That, that's, that's, that's what it is. And at the end of the day, when you're done sharing that word with someone, it must be that they feel at the very least the love of God, that they look back at Jesus, um, you know, um, and it's not, it, it really isn't about you or the exercise of sharing prophecy in itself and the, the honor and the glam of it. So there is honor, there is glam. When it comes to prophecy, people will think you're the most amazing person in the world, but that, 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 that glam will not take you anywhere. It will not keep you. It will not keep you in this great calling because it comes at a cost. It will cost you your sleep sometimes. Sometimes it will cost you your time, obviously, you know, because you're carrying, you know, the heart of God. And sometimes God interrupts your day. You know, he'll interrupt your plan so that you share 
his word with other people. And so it's important that you catch this very thing that, that, that it's about heart, it's about relationship. It's about, it's, it's about you being a representative of his word. That is what it's about. So I often get people who come to me and they'll say, oh, Max, can I get a prophetic word? And, and um, I'm someone who generally believes that God is always speaking. So I, I don't ever have a moment where I'm like, oh, God doesn't have a word for you, you know, because at the end of the day, the, the, the basic word that God wants to transfer to people is his love. So if I say to someone, hey, God loves you, that's enough of a word. That is enough of a word for them to be encouraged, for them to be edified, and for them to be exhorted. <laughs> and if you check the Bible and you go to that first Corinthians, okay, 14, that's what I got to do, <laughs> you know? And so at the very, very, very least, transfer the love of God, transfer the love of God. So let me move on. There are many scriptures about prophecy, but I'm, I'm just going to stick to the ones God said I should share with you um, today. And I think, um, you know, God has, has us in mind. You know, um, okay, so uh, we'll want to share the second scripture that God gave me, and this is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 32. It says, remember that people who prophesy are in control of their spirit and can take turns, okay? Here's another version. Another version says that this is the new international version. It says the spirit of prophets, the spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets, right? I'll read you another one. The spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets. What this means is that you can receive a prophetic word, but because you are in a specific spiritual space, it will come out in a specific way. So the word is subject to you, essentially, right? Um, and there are things that you will not be able to, to interpret. Sometimes there are things that you will not be able to interpret fully, or yeah, you will not be able to interpret fully just because of where you're standing or sometimes even um, because of how much knowledge you may have. God will share the word with you, but your interpretation will be based on where you're standing, if that makes sense, right? Um, and this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. The Bible says that we know in part, and I want you to receive that. You know in part, you don't know everything. I don't know everything, you know. You know in part, right? But that gap between, that gap between the full knowledge of the word, you know, creates that hunger for God, not just in you, but in, even in the person who's receiving the word. So it's, it's important that you always almost almost create that room for the people to interpret the word for themselves and not take full responsibility of the, of, of, of the word because one, the, you, you only know so much and the word is only coming in the way that you, know, you are hearing the word, you know, and your responsibility is to share it enough for them to hear what God is saying and they will be able to interpret the word. So let me give you an example. So um, uh, a few, uh, let me give you an example of something that is recent. Um, okay, so last week, I, I, for two days straight, I would wake up um, just feeling really, 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 really like emotional, right? And for me, um, I'm not, you know, I'm very in touch with my emotions and I'm very good at like processing my emotions because I know that if I don't process my emotions, there'll be a backlog. And if you know anything about the body, it's that it doesn't have a storage system for emotions. If you don't deal with your emotions, you know, um, you most likely they'll be transferred to something else. So it has a processing system of emotions, right? So if you don't deal with them, there'll be a malfunction in the system. So I know myself enough to know, okay, cool. Um, if I'm feeling a certain way, I'll, I'll just go for a walk or I need to talk to someone and that sort of thing. So I kind of know the atmosphere of my heart. So I wake up on a Tuesday and I'm just emotional. Like I'm emotional, two days straight, I'm emotional. And for me, when I start saying, oh man, I don't feel like myself, that's like, um, 
that's a that's a that's a that's an indicator that's a red alarm that okay this is my, probably not about me right so there's a friend of mine i keep speaking to i keep speaking to i ask her hey how are you doing you know like how are you doing oh, no i'm fine i'm doing great and she's jumpy she's bubbly she's all these things right so then the lord says to me um you know what this is not about you this is this person this person is actually really severely depressed and is dealing with suicidal thoughts right i'm like no but lord like i you know like i don't see it you know like she looks happy she seems happy you know and so god gives me a word for her so i give her this this word and it's to me it's very very strange and in my limited knowledge i'm like you know like sharing this word god you know is your great comfort you know he's the giver of life and he wants you to know that you know he cares about you etc cetera, etc cetera. this is landing on somebody who is happy and joyful seems happy and joyful let me tell you two days later this person you know checked themselves into a a, a facility you know and they were like no i've been depressed actually for the past the past two months and imagine if I had not shared that word imagine if I had not shared that word and she's like the courage that I got to deal with it came from from that word and if I had posted it at face value or with my limited knowledge I would not have shared the word so I want you to know that sometimes of course the the, the word is, is subject to the prophet which means the atmosphere of your heart does impact how the word is shared or even how the word is received but also your limited knowledge does not limit what God is wanting to do in people's lives. So your, your responsibility is simply to share the word and to share the word with love. And, and that's about it. So I want to share that with you today. And then I'll share a few more, a few more things. And then hopefully I'll get some time to prophesy um, over you guys. Okay. So here's my favorite scripture when it comes to 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 prophecy and it probably is way too simple because um prophecy is meant to sound very difficult and complicated um and and this is it it is that john 10 it's john 10 verse 27 it says my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me god will never speak to you in a foreign language he speaks to you in a language that you understand Okay, he speaks to you in a language to that you understand. And so what this means is anything that is confusing, anything that is is is, you know, like it probably is not from him because he speaks to you in a language that you understand. Um, and so here's an example. Um, when I, I so there's uh, certain things that, you know, certain ways that God speaks to me, but the main way that he speaks to me is through unctions, right? Um, but if I feel like I am confused or or like I need a bit more clarity, God will speak to me in my dreams. OK, so um, I, you know, dreamt a few days ago that I. Um, yeah, I dreamt a few days ago that I was uh, in a car. Right. And somebody was driving this car and the driving this car and it wasn't me. Right. And I had in the dream was so scared that somebody else was driving this car to the point where um, my fear drove the car off, um, off a bridge and I fell, right? And I fell over the bridge and I, I hit the ground, but I didn't die, you know, and I woke up. So when I woke up in, 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 in the morning and I shared this dream with a friend of mine and I was like, oh, um, as I was sharing it and I was hoping she would interpret it, it became clear, more and more clearer to me what God was saying, that God was saying that um, to me that my fear, if I let my fear um, control my narrative, um, you know, that it will drive me to a certain point. But, but then because God knows me and he knows like, like how I think, he's like, but you won't die. And that's something I say all the time. I say that all the time. And so for God to say it back to me, is is it was really meaningful for me now my friend came to me and 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 told me something completely different like this dream means that you know like there's a thing about death and da, 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 you know and i was like oh, okay 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 
and, but I just knew already that, no, you know what, this is what God is saying because he's speaking to me in a language that I understand. So God will always speak to you in a language that you understand. So um, some of you will, will, will get unctions. Some of you will empathize, you know, that empathy sometimes means that you feel the feelings of people that are, are around you. Um, first, before you hear the word from the Lord, some of you will hear, you will see pictures, right, which is that visual, that visual um, communication with God. Some of you, some of you would, will, will get dreams. Um, and this is how, let me share a little bit about dreams. Um, dreams, you, you need to think about dreams in two ways, right? And there, there are many ways, obviously, to interpret dreams. But you need to think about dreams in the same way that you think about visions, right? That, that God is giving you a picture, a mental picture um, of, of his word, right? And everything matters in the dream. Get into the habit of writing down your dreams as soon as you get them. So um, write as much detail as possible or record it. But the first, the first emotion that you get when you open your, your, your eyes is probably what um, the Lord is saying to you. Right. So so before you get freaked out, think, what was the first thing that I thought when I woke up? Right. That is the most the thing that God um, is probably saying to you. And then the, the information is in the detail. So write down everything like I was walking on the street. I turned and I looked left, you know, um, um, the other day I, I, I had a dream and the dream I um, I somebody shot me in. In, in my forehead, right? Somebody shot me in, the, in my forehead. And as I woke up, something was happening around me that would, would normally make me fearful. But because in the dream, immediately when I woke up in the dream, I thought to myself, um, a mental, like this is going to be an, a mental attack. So I was already prepared for what would happen next that, oh, okay, whatever's happening around me is to make me fearful so that my mind starts racing. So then I was prepared for, for the attack that would come that, okay, I need to preserve my mind. I need to be still, I need to be at peace. So what I'm saying to you is that, you know, God is speaking to you in a language that he, you, you will understand, but also that those dreams are very much um, um, there to, they're very much like a vision basically. So interpret it in, in that way. Um, Three things I do want to transfer to you as information um, before I share a little bit of testimony. Um, whatever you will, please um, let me know of time because I would love to prophesy. Um, but I just want to share these key things. Three things I, I want you to know is that um, there are three kinds of voices you will hear as a prophet, right? Um, so there is your voice, there is God's voice, there is also, um, there's your voice, there's God's voice, and there's the enemy's voice. And take this for, from me, thank you, Sissy. Um, take this from me. Um, every voice carries the characteristics of the person that it comes from, okay? So the voice of God will carry the characteristics of God. Um, and if you're wondering what the characteristics of God are, remember that the, the, the written word of God is the purest form of the word of God. And so you base everything on the word of God or you put everything against the word of God, right? Um, so, so this is what this looks like. Um, God will never lie, right? God will never um, put you down, right? There is no condemnation in Christ. God is not condemning you. God is a, you know, it speaks about the Holy Spirit being a spirit of truth. He will tell you the truth, you know? So all those characteristics, God is good. You know, all these things, God is just, all those things will show up in the way that God speaks to you. And when you're discerning the voice of God, remember whose voice am I listening to and what does it sound like? sound like whose characteristics does it sound like your voice will carry your characteristics it will carry your fears it will carry you know and and and, and the reason why i'm saying this to you is because sometimes your giftings will reflect your personality or what you're going through at the time so not all my dreams are are from god not all my dreams are from god some of my dreams are manifestations of my fears they're not really from God. And it's for me to know sometimes, oh no, that was my, just my fear, you know, or, oh, that's, that's just my hope, you know, 
um, but also then I also know what 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 God's um, voice looks looks like and sounds like. It's divine. It's majestic. You know, like it's holy. You know, did this dream carry that? Did it carry that sense of purity? You know, um, and that's how I navigate through. Okay, cool. Um, whose voice am I hearing from? And let's come to the enemy's voice. The enemy's voice is there to to lie to you, to steal from you, to destroy. You know, he's there to confuse. There's no confusion there in Christ. You know, so if anything is is confusing, if anything is heavy, you know, I don't know why I'm leaning a lot on dreams. I think maybe some of you are dreamers. Um, but I, I want you to know that, you know, the enemy is also in there, you know, trying to, you know, communicate certain things. With that, know that once you have discerned something, God gives you authority to deal with it. So if you discern something that is negative or discern something that is not from the Lord, um, um, you have the authority to deal with it. So be, be very engaging and a participant, you know, and wake up when you wake up you know, um, wake up and rebuke the dream, cancel the dream. You can even ask God to take you back to that dream. So Lord, can you take me back to that situation and do what, what, what needs to be done? Lord, I rebuke the enemy. I de decree and declare right now that you have no, no hold on me. You know, this is not going to happen. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. You know, so you dream something negative, you, you are an active participant. You discern something negative, you are an active participant. You can pray against certain things. You can exercise that authority that Christ has given us to trample over scorpions, to dismantle the work of the enemy. You have that authority. Um, that God has given you. And when you are confused, Holy Spirit will help you. Ask him what to do. He will tell you what to do. Um, um, some of you, I do feel that um, um, you are tortured sometimes, even in the dream space. The enemy is there, like, like tormenting you with fears, tormenting you with um, negative things. Commit your dream space and your dream life um, to God, especially being spiritual people, you know, we are Africans, a lot of you, some of you are Africans, some of you, you know, come from cultures where, um, cultures are very, that are very, very spiritual, spiritually inclined. It's important that you commit your dream life to, 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 to the Lord. Um, so here's an example. I think in the early days of like, you know, prophesying. So I, I started prophesying or, or rather experiencing Holy Spirit, I think from the age of like eight, right? And for the longest time, I would have these dreams about people dying. Oh, so-and-so is going to die. Oh, so-and-so is going to die. And then something will happen, or whatever. Um, and, and I had to learn to take that, commit my dream space to God um, and say, Lord, only you reign here. This is not a place for the enemy to 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 terrorize me you know or to terrorize people you know and um and i committed my dream space to god and <clears throat> i stopped having those dreams i stopped having those dreams so if there is anything like that for you where you're having nightmares you know where it's all about you know because the, the enemy can also pervert you know um prophetic gifts that's why you have people like people who are sangomas you have people that are um mediums you know, those people, they are all prophetic. It's just that the enemy is using it for his, for his agenda, you know. So commit your dream space to God. Commit your ability to hear God, um, to God, so that you are hearing, um, you are hearing from God more than anything else. Again, I, I want to say to you, God is not there to confuse you. Um, the, the whole point of being able to hear him is to be in relationship with him, is to... Um, allow him to lead you and for you to be able to live this life better and for you to transfer the word of God in a way that equips people to live that abundant life, to live in Christ I mean, to live in Christ well. Um, I have a few more things I want to share with you. Um, two more things I want to share with you around um, prophecy and the delivery of prophecy. So what are the things that I think you should stay away from and, and or rather tread very carefully around is three things. That is um, uh, births, deaths, and spouses. I say this to say God will speak to you about those things, 
but how you interpret it, um, do it with caution, preserving the heart of the person um, that you, you are sharing with, right? So God might tell you that, you know, someone will get married at a certain time. Someone, I want you to be, to, to be very careful how you share that information, being careful to share it well, you know, and give them the room to work through it, right? So your language is everything when it comes to that. Let me give you um, an example. I had a friend who um, she was um, diagnosed, you know, by a doctor with a, like um, uh, uh, an abdominal, you know, situation. And she had literally 1% chance, two friends actually, 1% chance of having a baby right um and so she was getting a lot of miscarriages right and um i remember um the lord speaking to me specifically about um about her having a child you know and and i had to you know like i was i was so convinced you know and that's how the word of god comes to me in these unctions and this you know, I'm resolute about something, you know, and I'm like, man, she's going to have a child. And I remember sharing this with her. And for her at the time, it was not encouraging at all. It was not encouraging at all. It made her feel, you know, um, discouraged and made her feel like, um, you know, like she's not good enough, you know. And so it's important that, that when you share these words, you are aware of when to share them and how to share them. You know, so say it in a way that that, you know, simple things like, you know, um, I really believe that the Lord, you know, is is going to change the situation, you know, and um, with time, you're going to see results. Just know that he's with you. Sometimes that's all there, there is to say. And if should it be that the Lord shares with you, you know, to say to them, you are going to have a baby, you are going to have a baby at this specific time, do it with caution and make sure that you're really hearing from 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 the Lord because at times you know we 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 share things and again we hear in part and it doesn't happen for an, another you know five ten years you know um and then and then it, yes of course it happens but the disappointment that happens in between because you miss the time you know or you said it at the wrong you know what I mean like there is no need for somebody's relationship with God to be a casualty in the way that you share the prophetic word. So I, I really want you to be really cautious about that. Be thoughtful about that. Um, deaths as well. Please be careful around deaths. Be careful about births. You know, um, rather say something that just speaks about life than expansion. Rather say something that speaks about growing a family, you know, and maybe privately you can say to that person, pray about it, think about it. The word of God does say in Thessalonians that, you know, they must test the word and take, take what is good, you know, so share it in that way. Even if you know, share it in a way that, that, that gives them the opportunity to work, to work through it. But if God is really saying to you, you know, you know, give them the date, then give them the date, you know, but I really want you to be cautious around those things because we are there to, to, to really catch people's hearts and especially when you're still young in prophecy, stay away from those things until you reach a place where you really feel like you're mature enough to even handle the response. Because sometimes you get people, you know, like they will DM you for two, three years saying to you, you know, um, you told me on this date that this is going to happen. Hold on, guys. I'm just going to put on my computer on the charger, you know. So they, they will DM you and they will ask you, hey, you know, what happened to the word? You said that the Lord is going to give me a husband by this date, you know? And it's like, what 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 do you do? <laughs> you know, what are you gonna do? Like, are you gonna like what are you gonna do to to make sure that that word, you know, um happens at the time that that you said, you know, is gonna happen, especially if the time has passed, you know? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna make that happen? So it's just important for us to um just be careful around those three things. You know, the word, the word of God is, is enough. You know, that encouragement is enough. You don't have to be, um, yeah, exactly. Where's my husband? Yo, I get those DMs. Liz, Miles, you told me five years ago that my husband is coming to me, you know. Um, yeah, 
Um, I also want to say, hold on. There are people that you're going to meet along the way that are not going to believe you. You you might be like very prophetic, but I wanna I wanna I wanna warn you that there are people who are not going to believe you. Don't take that to heart. Don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart. Share the word that God is telling you to share. Share it because they may not believe you right now, but they sure will believe it when when the Lord does does it right. So I remember um, sharing this word with a with a, a woman, and she had just gotten divorced. You know, she was living the single life, and she was, man, she had just gone through the worst stuff. You know, and I remember saying to her, "No, don't worry, God is going to give you a family one day, and um, things will work out. Don't worry." And I remember her not even, man. I mean, that lady treated me like. <laughs> Happen, you know um and these things happen in, in 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 the prophetic world where it's just like people are just like whatever you know two years later the exact thing i told her would happen happened exactly like that she got married she's got a child now you know like things literally worked out the way that i had told her they were going to work out as so so give it time, share the word and leave it there. Leave it there. Live your life for the audience of one. Audience of one, and that is God. Don't live for the applause. Don't live for the for, for the negative stuff either. You know, just share the word of God. And I would even go as far as to say, if 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 what you share doesn't have the theatrics, that's also fine. If it has the theatrics, that's also fine. Be yourself. If you're a jumper around that, you know, you want to scream, you want to do that, do that. You know, you don't know who who that's that that's going to impact, you know. But if you're somebody who's quiet and you're gentle and all you do is share the scripture, you know, that's okay too. God, God wants to use you to share his word, you know. Um there is no there is no template for who and what must be a, a, a prophet. This is not to say that this, this calling is not important. This is not to say this calling is not something to be taken seriously. But I want you to know that, that God is interested in, in using anybody who's available, you know, to be used to comfort, to edify, and to encourage the body of Christ. So he wants to use you too. Um, the last thing I want to share um, and and I know this is this is this is probably going to be uh, one of those things that you know um, probably people don't really focus on. Um, work on your heart. Work on your heart. Work on your character. Work on your heart. Work on your character. Um, before God, what I've learned and I, I, I've learned the past five years specifically is that the character of a prophet is very important. Be a person of your word, be consistent, you know, um, work on yourself, work on your heart, work on your character, because those things come through in the way that you, you share the word of God and the way that you hear the word of God, um, um, the work on, on yourself. Know that as a prophet, you will be tested that gifting will be tested. You will go through every, every prophet, every great prophet goes through a period of being in the wilderness. Every great prophet goes through a period of um, character building, a period of rejection, you know, <laughs> and, and those times are there to teach you character, you know, resolve, um, because God is going to send you to, to share difficult messages and you need to stand your ground because before God, you know, it says in the, in, in the word of God that before God does something, he shares it with, the, with his prophets first. And this is Amos 3 verse 7. And we, when, we, when we hear that, 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 that word, we think it's, oh, it sounds so cool. We're like privileged to hear it first. Yes, you are privileged to hear it first, but there's a cost to that right that means that you will share words with people and people will not believe you you know you are going to go through rejection i remember 
beginning of 2020, I wrote a, a, a prophetic word. I sent it to pastors. And I, man, and this prophetic word was very clear. There's something that is coming. There is something that is coming. And I said to them, guys, you need to, you need to, to, to clean up your organizations. You need to look after the least of these. You need to make sure that you're hearing from them, that you, you are um, memorializing the people that have suffered for, 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 for your organization um, because something is about to happen. Literally three months later, COVID hit. And after COVID hit, there were all these people that were exposed in, in churches. And it was just like one after the other. And it's the churches that I sent the word to, which is crazy. And when I sent out the word, I think only one person, one of those pastors was like, took it seriously, one person, you know. And so I want to say to you, like things like that <clears throat> will happen. And the way that you, you survive those things is through, you know, that character building, the time of, of honing your gift, your gift in private with God, um, building your relationship with God, building in terms of your character. So, so that, is, that is the most important thing. And once you're out of the wilderness season and your gifting is out there and everybody knows and people learn to trust you and trust what you have to say, I want you to make sure that, that you keep the rhythm of, of, of retreating with God. So every so often, do like Jesus would do, you know, he'd be with the disciples, he would be with the masses, but then he would retreat and be with the father, you know, and that is where it's at. That is the most important thing, you know, um, that relationship with God, and it will keep you, it will keep you when people doubt you, when they doubt what you have to say, when they doubt your ministry, when they doubt, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, it will keep you because you're doing it for the audience of one, you're doing it for God. And for those who are called to ministry, um, I just want to share this word, and, and I feel it very strongly in, in my heart, that God wants you to know that it is only for a season. The dry, the dry season, the, 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 the season of, of building and the season of, you know, um, yeah, the, the, that season, that the hard season, it's, a, it's only a season. You know, and I, and I say this a lot that, you know, when a season ends, a season ends, you know, seasons are meant to change, you know, it will change, you know, God will bring you people around you that, that support you, God will grow your ministry, just be faithful, be faithful, show up, show up even when there's no one, show up, you know, and share the word, even if people don't believe you, you know, show up, you know, um, share that word. Um, I want to share, I think lastly, then I'm going to prophesy, if that's okay. Um, um, I want to share my testimony. So I, um, okay, let me put it this way. So I remember I gave my life to the Lord at the age of 12. You know, I had a very traumatic childhood, really. And um, I remember giving my life to the Lord in my grandmother's bedroom. And I remember asking God and I said, you know, Lord, I, um, the gift that I want is the gift of prophecy, right? I was like, oh, I don't know why, I, I don't know, I just, I don't know where I got that from, but I was like, oh, the gift that I want, Lord, is the gift of prophecy, that's the gift that I want, you know? And I had already been having dreams and I think I just didn't know that that was a prophetic gift, but my gift was really activated when I was, um, at a meeting at church, <laughs> um, at a meeting at church, it was like a Holy Spirit meeting. And um, the, the purpose of the meeting was that, you know, people would, would encounter Holy Spirit and they would begin to pray in tongues. And I remember um, sitting in the second row and I fell over, right? I just fell over, <laughs> like in the middle of the pew. And I'm like, mm -hmm. afterwards, I'm like, I didn't get any tongues. <laughs> Like, nothing is happening, you know, and I went back to my, to my room, and that day, when I opened my Bible, I started to, to, to see people's names, I just, like, read a scripture, and there'd be a name, read another scripture, and there'd be a name, and then I started sharing, like, these scriptures with people, and people would be like, this is the scripture that I needed, you know, and that's where it started for me. And I remember being mentored um, by 
someone who's now a friend of mine and she she just said to me practice practice excuse me practice um sharing the word of god and that's what i did i i just which is practice you know share sharing the word of god and um i want you to not be afraid to make mistakes you know and i remember she said to me um she said uh she said you must be willing to miss god to hear god and what that means is there'll be times when you are going to miss it because you're a human being and you know in part but if you carry that heart of love you know and you <clears throat> and you share with people that you know what you 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 know test this word pray about this word see if it's from the lord from you for you you give people the prerogative and the agency to to interact with the word as on their own you know it will give you room to 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 learn and to grow and to know you know your 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 way of hearing god your way of sharing the word of god and it will expand your ear and it will expand your voice you know um so um i'm saying that to say perhaps your your the way that you hear hearing god right now is not the most dramatic you know it wasn't for me back then you know my experience now is completely different my experience now is this immersive like every day i'm just like oh okay lord you know but it really started small you know so practice practice hearing from from him take it seriously as well um the 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 opportunity to hear from him and the opportunity to to transfer his love um to people um i like to think of myself as more of a um like corporate person like a corporate word person like i get a lot of words about like what god is doing corporately you know um but i also love to prophesy over um individuals but that took time to get to that took time to figure out and if you don't practice practice spending time with him practice you know being with him and practice sharing the word you won't come to know you know what is your um what they call it your matron you know so 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 figure that out figure out where exactly you know and how exactly god wants to speak to you and you will see like when you walk in that in in whatever authority you have you know you see people will, will be responsive responsive but take your time be gentle with this with yourself you know you've got your whole life ahead of you you know um um, God is God is going to use you to do different things, but 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 land at this place of relationship, land at this place of love, and continue continue to share the word of God, um, and don't let and I'm, I'm saying this again, don't don't get off on the applause, don't don't get off on the negative stuff either, you know, let your confidence, your assurance, come from God. And don't be too good to apologize. You know, um, a few years ago, Chris Valentin um, prophesied about the the um, elections, the the um, U, um, U.S. elections, and he was wrong. He was wrong, and he had to come back and apologize. Apologize, like if you're wrong and you've heard something wrong or you said something, you know, and somebody's like, "Man, I just didn't feel encouraged. I felt discouraged." Or apologize. Apologize, it's not going to take anything away from you. You know, it keeps you humble and God raises up the humble, you know. Um, um, I would even go as far as to say, apologize even if you know you're right. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, sorry, you know. And I know, you know, for us as prophets, sometimes, you know, uh, we can have a need to be right, you know. Um, and And you know what? Like, we don't need to be right. So... So apologize where you need to and move on. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You know, um, yeah. And uh, I think lastly, I keep saying lastly, I hope you transfer the desire in people to hear, for, hear from God um, for themselves. You know, you don't ever want anybody to be addicted to hearing from you because then it becomes about you and, and this fix, you know, because people get 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 a fix from 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 hearing the word of God. They get a fix, you know. And um, what you want to do consistently is 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 direct them back to God. Say, you know what? Go test the word. Go hear from the from from the Lord yourself. You know, um, 
don't don't get into the habit of feeding that thing you know give us a prophetic word give us a prophetic word give us a prophetic word um no you know don't 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 feed into that thing and i'm telling you you'll sense it you'll sense the difference between you know an opportunity to to encourage and people who are just addicted to the high you know and um in those moments those are moments for you to teach to share to say hey god is interested in in hearing from you you know pray ask him how what he has to say what he has to say to you you know it won't always be that way that's not everyone but there are those who who will come to you for that um yeah and i think another thing is that um people will come for you for three reasons most of the time because they love jesus and they want to hear from jesus because they love money and they want to hear about money, because they want to get married, <laughs> okay? So that does not mean you don't share the word of God, but it just means just to be, to be aware of that. And as you're sharing the word of God, you know, to always keep it to exactly what the Lord is saying to you. Don't feed into the pressure to give words that, that God is not saying to you, you know? If God is not telling you the person's going to be a millionaire, then God is not telling you the person's going to be a millionaire, you know? Give them the word that God is, is telling you to give to them, you know? Um, so yeah, so we direct um, people right back to Jesus. Um, yeah, I hope that is, that is helpful. I would love to pray and prophesy over a few people. Um, if that is okay with Tepo, give me a thumbs up. Um, and maybe give me a number of how many people to I can go through or a time frame, whatever works best for you. I'm under authority over here and I submit to the leadership of this room. It's 10 minutes. Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, if I call out your name, please um, switch on your camera. That would be helpful for me. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we'll, I'll just pray and prophesy over you. Um, can I please uh, prophesy over Michelle? Michelle with dreadlocks. It says dreadlocks. Michelle in. Okay, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Michelle, can I give you a word? Hello. Hi, where are you? Hi, hi, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, I feel the Lord saying to you um, just a few things. Um, um, you're a very gifted woman. God is saying you carry a gift of, of wisdom over your, your life. You are so wise and you are so um, passionate. God is saying to me that you have a gift of governance everywhere you go. Um, you, it's, it's almost like you, you, you know where everything should be, you know, and um, God has given you a gift of leadership and a gift of strategy. Um, your prophetic gift um, is going to, to open up, um, sure, storehouses, not just for you, but for many around you. I really believe kind of um, the next two years, I know I just told you guys not to give dates, but I'm giving dates. <laughs> But the next two years are very important for you in terms of just ministry and and life, right? Um, and I just hear God saying that you're putting the bricks in the right places. Um, I think there are going to be three faith moves that you're going to make um, in the next two years, big faith moves. Um, God wants you to know that they're going to yield um, big results. Um, and um, there's, a, there's a few women around you that God is going to bring to help you build um, what is calling you to build. You're a wise woman. You carry such a strong voice um, of authority, um, so much so that when you share and when you speak, people are, are, are delivered. That's what I hear the Lord um, I'm saying to you. And just personally for you in the next coming um, season, I just really feel God almost drawing you in and pushing you out, those two things. It's like you're going deeper in your, in your, in your personal fellowship with him, but also God is, is um, yeah, pushing you forward, man, like into, into, into the spotlight, into places that yeah. you, um, <laughs> um, into places where people are going to see you and people are going to hear you, you know, um, God is determining your path. Um, and God is also saying that it's been a long time coming. 
you know, and um, it's it's that time now where it's going to yield a lot of a lot of fruit. Um, amen. I'm gonna stop there. I could go on because you're amazing, but I'm gonna do amen. Time. Amen. I hope that I, I hope that. Oh. Yeah, it makes sense. It has already started. Um, he told me to come here today and stay throughout wow. because I'm supposed to start my live at nine and we normally start at 2040. So he said I must stay. So I know he wanted me to hear this. Oh my goodness. So yeah, it, it has already started. So you are on point. Come on, somebody. Do what God is calling you to do. There's great, 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 great fruit that is coming, you know, your way. Um, and you're beautiful, man. Your heart is, man, your heart is for the Lord. Like you are, you're a lover, a true lover of Jesus. God yes. bless you. God bless your ministry. Um, even tonight as you go into your life, let it, let it do what God, God intends for it to do. Let it go far. Let that voice reach far. And may people, um, yeah, man, be impacted and delivered through your ministry in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. And thank you, we table for this platform. Thank you so much, Sissy. You're God welcome. bless you. Thank you. Um, I would like to pray for um, Karen. Karen, are you there? K-A-R-E-N. Hello, did you hear me? Hi, Karen. How are you Hi. doing? I'm good. How are you? Where are you from? I'm from Costa Rica, Central America. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is, Is that it... right? Yeah. <laughs> Karen, um, you carry a very strong sense of discernment. Um, a very sense of a, a strong sense of discernment of spirit. So much so that when you walk into rooms, sometimes you can feel um what's going on. You can feel the emotions of people. You can feel the spirits that are in the room. Um, and I and I and I, I hear the Lord saying that sometimes even the um, much like what I shared earlier, some of the emotions that you feel sometimes are not even your emotions. You know, you're carrying the emotions of people around you. You're carrying the emotions, um, um, even the emotions of heaven. Sometimes, almost like when when the spirit is grieved, you can sense it. You know, and I hear the Lord saying that with that comes a gift of intercession you know, um, an authority um, in prayer. Um, you are an atmosphere changer with your voice and with your, with your prayers and even with your words. Um, God wants you to exercise that gift in this, in this season, that when you walk into rooms, you start to declare what God is doing. I speak just a, a great activation of Holy Spirit in you. I speak that he will be like a fire completely in your bones. That, that you will know what to say. You will know what to say and you will know um, what to speak. Um, and I, 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 yeah, I pray also for a change of atmosphere that people would receive you. You know, um, I, I feel like there's a, almost like a spirit of unbelief. Like, I don't know if it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a territory thing. It's the place where you are, where it's like, you have to really be thoughtful, you know, um, about how you share certain things and when you share certain things and it's because people are very skeptical or something but there's a, a kind of a resistance um but I, I i i declare a change of atmosphere and i feel in my spirit that um you're going to be received by people who don't even believe in jesus you know like yeah. It, it is yeah like it is it is an anointing like on your life like it is crazy you know, and it's going to open doors for you. I feel like you have this kind of disconnect where it's like, these are the spirit things and these are the things in the world. How do I connect that with my daily life and what's happening around me and the things that I need right now? It's about to translate. God is going to give you um, a strategy on how to translate that into um, clear, clearly what your ministry must look like. And it's going to transform transform your life you know mm -hmm. and you won't have this gap anymore of like um man there's there's my spirit life and the needs of of the day you know so god is going to is going to he's going to meet that gap with his strategy he's going to give it to you in the next little while so just be open and even if it sounds crazy do it anyway do it anyway do it anyway. i will thank yeah. you so much you're welcome you're welcome 
let me move on. I want to I want to just God bless you, Karen. Uh, may God bless your ministry and what you be doing. I want to prophesy over two more people. Um, I just want to meet the time, the time frame. Um, can I pray for um uh, can I pray for my I, I won't be able to pronounce your name. Um, can I pray for Amu? Amu, are you there? Hello, are you I'm there? here. Okay, where are you? And then I need to pray for a guy because then otherwise it's just wrong. You know, I can't pray for ladies. <laughs> Hi, Amu. How are you? Are you at work? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. Can I pray? Can I pray for you quickly? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for um, um oh um, God says that you are a um gentle spirit. Um, you are a man, like you're a lover in every single way. Like when you love, you love completely, you know. Um, you give your heart completely, you love. The people in your life you love your friends you love so deeply but in this area you've had a lot of um disappointments you know like it just feels like oh man like like i just really want to be somebody trusting um and that's who you want to be but it's just not easy you know when you think of all the things that you've gone through and um i just feel in my soul that god wants you to know that um, his restorative hand is upon your life, you know, to restore um, not only your heart, but to restore the land, to restore what is happening around you. This is what I hear the Lord saying to you that a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. You know, I, I share that a lot because we, we speak a lot about, um, you know, hope deferred may, makes the heart grow sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I, I feel like God is going to be answering a few secret prayers that you have um, in the next little while. And it's going to be this, this um, a longing fulfilled. That's what God is saying, a longing fulfilled. It's going to be a tree of life. It's going to be a blessing, not just to you, but even to the people around you. Um, God is saying, stay the course, do not give up, you know, do not give in to discouragement. You know, um, faith is going to be your, your, your weapon in the season, trust what God is saying, trust what God has, is able to do. He wants you to know that he is a faithful God and that he is going to be faithful to you too. So God bless you, Amo. Um, this is what I, I hear the Lord saying to you. Um, testify, come share with me example what the Lord has done. Thank you, God bless. Amen. Thank you, Sissy. Um, I'm going to pray for one more person, and I hope I've I've, I've gotten to 15 minutes. Um, may I pray for Gary? I can't see any guys here. I need to pray for at least one guy. Yes, <laughs> Gary is a guy. Gary, bro. Hello. Hi, Gary. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. All is well. Nice. May I pray for you quickly? Yes, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Gary. Um, thank you for what you're doing in his heart. Gary, you have um, two sides of you. Um, one side of you is, is very soft and sensitive, and one side of you is very strong-headed. God is saying you're, you're, you're strong-willed. You are stubborn, hard to convince, <laughs> you know, but when you, when you get it, you get it and you will run. Um, you are a son in the house. Um, when God sends you, sends you to do something, you do it well, you know, and you will not stray from that. You are about serving the Lord and serving the Lord with all of your heart. Um, I do feel that um, God is softening a few things around you. God is softening your heart a little bit. Um, and he's doing that in preparation for where you are going. Um, I feel there are three things that you're going to build. Um, one is ministry related, one is personal, <clears throat> and I feel one is um, business, actually, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. 
question. <clears throat> and um, God is saying, um, you don't have to do one thing at a time. You mm. can do three things at once. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. that Holy Spirit is going to help you build these three things. I feel like you have this need to be organized, like about things. Like you need to make sure that you start it, you finish it. You need to make sure that, you know, that you put in this amount of time, you know, and God mm. is saying, okay, cool, 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 cool. That's fine. But he's saying, you know, you can build three things, mm. you know, and this is going to be very important for you, especially in this, in these next kind of five years, um, because you're looking <clears throat> to put your name on something. You know, you're, you're looking at building legacy, basically. Yeah. Um, and God is saying, that's not your agenda. That's God's agenda. You know, it's what he's put in your heart and he's, it's what he's put on your, on your soul. Um, two things about those two things, that, those three things that you're building. I hear the word community, right? Mm. That you, you, you need to do things in community, but also God is going to put you out there in community um the the second thing is god saying raw um which means um, um be loud about it you know um release the sound do exactly what you you're called to do do not it's almost like don't censor anything don't don't you know like yeah yeah um, make it you know sound a certain way or be a certain way um and that's where it's at you are going to be fulfilled you know you are going to to you, you're going to hit the mark. You're going to hit the mark. By that, I mean, you are going to walk into in your life's purpose. You do these three things and you're going to be walking in your life's purpose. Um, God bless you, Gary. That's what I hear the Lord saying. I hope that was encouraging to you. It was. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And thank you, OB Tessel, as well. So guys, thank you for letting me share with you. I hope those keys and those things were helpful to you. Go out there, share the word of God, love God's presence, um, you know, like be in relationship with God at the end of the day. And if all else fails, just share the love of God. And it was an honor and a privilege to share with you. And I'll hand over to my sister and our leader for this meeting with Temple. Um, Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Maxine. If I can just bother you one more time. Do you mind Problem, just bother me? To, yeah. <laughs> do you mind just <laughs> praying over us um, yes. as we close off? And yes, know. okay. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Where you are, I want you to just open your hands to receive. I don't want you to pray with me. Just open your hands to receive. Lord, I just release, Father God, a prophetic gift, Father God, over everyone here, Father God. I ask, Father, if there's anything that you have given me, whether it's a word, you know, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of forth telling, Lord God, the gift, Father God, of um, encouragement, Lord God, um, a faith gift, Father God, I ask that they would get a double portion, Lord God, <clears throat> of that right now, Lord God. Father, I pray right now for an activation. People will dream dreams. People will see visions. Lord God, people, Father God, will prophesy from, from here on out, Father, those who have been tongue-tied, the people who have been tongue-tied um, in this space, um, you have been scared to share the word of God. I declare and decree a release right now over your life that you will share the word of God. But most importantly, Father God, I pray that your prophets would be taken care of, Father, that they would lack nothing, Lord God. Wherever they are, Father, they would see the miraculous move of God, Lord God. That's what I hear God saying over you guys, that there's going to be a miraculous move of God in your personal lives. Um, God is saying signs and wonders. Things will suddenly be put in place for you. You will receive favor in crazy in crazy places, not just because you're a prophet, but because um, you love Jesus. So be aware of that. Um, Father God, I come against any spirit of discouragement, Lord God, any unbelief, Lord God. Um, we are in a season as a generation and as a people of God, a season of answered prayer. So, so take that and grab a hold of that for yourself. Um, Father, I release that over them. Father, God, a special grace, Lord God, over their lives right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for their lives. Protect them, Lord God, but most importantly, develop them in them, Father God, a great love and a hunger for you. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so, so much, Maxine. Um, you are so blessed. Um, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who came through tonight. Um, please come through tomorrow. There will be another day of, of impartation, really, because that's, that's really what we are receiving. So, yeah, good night, good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bless you. Bless you all. Thank you so much for coming.